this MECO object um, is able to transfer magnetic fields through it. The particle pair creation process actually causes a spontaneous transmission of the magnetic field from the inside to the outside. So whatever magnetic field was in the star-like object that was to become a black hole, that magnetic field can survive the formation of the MECO object. In my talking, you'll occasionally hear me slipping into talking about black holes, because that's what everybody talks about, and that makes it easy to understand. But throughout this, from now on, unless I say specifically classic black hole, I mean this MECO object, because the properties that the MECO object bring to this discussion are extremely profound for this reason. We understand that the object cannot transfer a laser signal coming from the outside, from the distant observer, say, uh, the distant observer in his living room watching a TV set. Those photons could not penetrate to the inside of the MECO object in the finite lifetime of the universe. However, the penetration time is just a little bit longer than that. And so if something could travel a little bit faster than the speed of light, then that something could penetrate. Now this becomes interesting because in recent times, uh, Professor Szilard, working in Europe, has demonstrated that, in fact, what Einstein called spooky action at a distance, namely quantum effects tying particles together in the universe, do travel not a little faster, but enormously faster. They've been measured up to 10,000 times the speed of light, but that's just a limit on the measuring apparatus because you know you can't do this transferring signals around with clocks and with lasers anymore because um, lasers don't do the job. They are restricted to the speed of light. And so to do these kind of experiments means calibrating atomic clocks and comparing clocks before and after the experiment, blah, blah, blah. We sure can make it complicated and difficult, but that's what you have to do. The bottom line is quantum information transfers through the universe, perhaps beyond the universe, and almost certainly to the interior of the black hole much faster than the speed of light. Now, what's inside the black hole? Well, nobody's ever been there, or have we? If thought energy propagates like spooky action at a distance, then, in principle, thought can get to the black hole and enter to whatever quantum state must be at the center of a black hole. And what would be in the black hole is now considered to be most likely a Bose-Einstein condensate which is something that's in our traditional literature and perhaps would take a separate event to describe more fully. But just the bottom line is it's a very intense quantum state where the whole range of possibilities of information is present all at the same time in a very concentrated way. I think there is some New Age literature that you could find that says where nature made a black hole, it actually made a white hole. And that means that inside of the object very well could be a quantum state which has incredible information processing abilities. It could be a totally awesome brain of some kind resonating with all of our brains as objects or sentient beings not inside this MECO object. So, it's entirely possible that when we're talking about processes of consciousness in the universe, we are talking about potentially communicating with contents of MECO slash black hole objects. Now, um, I want to describe the mathematical developments that it would take to understand this, because I just know there's a lot of geeks out there who want to see a demonstration at something like the level of Maxwell's equations that can describe how does this process in the universe work where 
we talk about information sometimes being of a quantum character, but sometimes, damn it, if I bang my head on the blackboard, I feel something. I didn't imagine there was a blackboard there. There's something that creates the reality of that blackboard. And for that, I would like to refer to a few very simple uh, mathematical ideas that um, I think all of the geeks would be comfortable with. 